Okay, our next speaker is uh, Anastasia Georgievskaya from Hout.ai. Um, she's going to tell us about how you can predict chronological age from hands images using neural networks. Anastasia, are you there? Uh, yes. Hello, Morton. Hello, uh, uh, everyone. Yeah, great to see you and welcome to the meeting. Um, you can go ahead uh, to share your screen and we can and tell us about your interesting story uh, as um, fast as possible. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thank you, Morton. Uh, thank you for the great uh, intro. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers for gathering us all on this fantastic event and really honored to be among all the speakers. Um, today, I would love to talk about the um, visual biomarkers of aging and skin health and the alternatives to the facial images, which are most usually uh, used for research and to show the benefits of other imaging data uh, that can be utilized for predicting chronological age as a first step towards development of biological age predictors and also the predictors and biomarkers. So in our uh, company, we are uh, focusing on the development of um, computer vision algorithms that allow to analyze multiple skin parameters, including biomarkers of aging and skin features using neural network and artificial intelligence. And our focus is uh, not uh, only on uh, lab controlled images, uh, but we are uh, looking into the development of solutions that could be easily available and affordable by uh, a lot of people worldwide. This is why we're of course looking to the alternatives um, data sources like uh, images or embedded devices. And in fact, right now, I would say that uh, iPhone is the perfect imaging system uh, that can be utilized to track uh, the tiny changes that are happening on a daily basis. And therefore, uh, this potential to track uh, visual biomarkers, um, I believe really will help keeping people engaged and care more about their longevity status. And it is very rewarding when you can have a fast feedback about your uh, organism condition and it responds to different uh, lifestyle changes and interventions. Um, and I, I would love to start uh, this talking about the um, biomarkers and the age estimation, which is coming from uh, face uh, images. So there basically have been published um, several research uh, which talk about the prediction from the whole face pictures. Uh, for example, our group uh, also published an alternative approach where we are focusing only on uh, areas of eye as they're most prone to aging. And it is believed that uh, as they're more prominent, the um, observation of biomarkers in these areas is, is likely to happen earlier than on other body parts. However, um, when while we still can use uh, facial images data, uh, there are several um, disadvantages. Um, one of them is that um, facial uh, our face is likely to be affected by uh, different uh, facial rejuvenation techniques. We're also applying a lot of cosmetics and usually um, our face is a part that we are taking a lot of care of and therefore the results uh, of using um, facial uh, image data exclusively uh, can be quite biased. Uh, secondly, uh, when we talk about uh, um, facial image data, this data is quite sensitive and um, some 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 uh, individuals might not be willing to share this uh, sensitive data, and uh, therefore we need to find a more um, not not that sensitive alternative. And uh, lastly, uh, while um, it is good that facial data can uh, can change quite fast in response to uh, different interventions, and as speakers before mentioned, it is important that the biomarker reflects uh, the effect of different interventions. At the same time, sometimes facial data can be just too fast. So one day uh, you may uh, wake up with uh, just an allergy and therefore your face, uh, face will look a lot of different. You might look older uh, compared how you um, looked at yesterday. And therefore um, this, if, uh, this feature of facial data can make it um, not very robust when it comes to prediction of your chronological age and potentially to the prediction of your biological age. 
So secondly, um, when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence in general and specifically in the domain where we are working, which is uh, usage of uh, visual features, there, there exists specific challenges. So one of these challenges is that uh, data is very diverse. It might be even more diverse than in other areas. And um, when we talk specifically about photographic data, one of the biggest challenges is their uh, skin tone of the individuals that can vary from very light skin tones to very dark skin tones. And the, the approaches to uh, analysis of uh, skin tone can also be quite different. So uh, I think that many of you have heard about Fitzpatrick uh, assessment of your phenotype, which takes into account your eye color and hair color and skin color. On, at the same time, when we talk about Fitzpatrick skin tone, it identifies you to a specific bin, uh, like the first group, the second, the third group, and uh, it can be not very sensitive. Therefore, there exists a, a very good alternative, which is widely utilized in um, plastic surgeon by skincare researchers, by uh, biomedical experts who are working in medical dermatology, which is uh, called uh, ETA skin tone classification. So ETA, in fact, uh, is, uh, ca can be measured through the representation of images in LED uh, color space and um, it is uh, like the abbreviation stands for individual uh, topology angle. So I would love to speak more on that uh, later on in my presentation. And the ability to very accurately measure skin tone and um, uh, the ability to develop balanced data set is a key to the development of diverse AI that can work on different uh, populations and different cohorts. And it's a very important step um, towards developing the solutions that are easily scalable and then which can be used by a large group of people. So I would also love to talk uh, more about the development of the algorithms, which are uh, skin tone agnostics uh, as again, a first step towards diverse artificial intelligence. So in this, um, in this example, I I'm focusing the, on the redness of the skin and uh, if you think, if you have a look at the darker skin tones, it, it might seem that, uh, in fact, it's very difficult to capture the signs of redness. But in our group, as we are training uh, neural networks on diverse data sources, uh, it allows us to develop algorithms uh, to make algorithms not discriminative against specific skin tones. And for that, we're using different approaches, including um, representations of different channels in the image like hemoglobin channel or melanin channel separately to develop the scores for the algorithms uh, which allow us to compare results in lighter skin tones and the darker skin tones. And um, having all of this background to basically set up on a goal to develop a new approach towards uh, chronological image estimation from images which first will not be biased in terms of the potential different rejuvenation technologies and on the secondly it will be not um, discriminative and it will be uh, genuinely diverse and can be utilized for uh, different um, phenotype groups so we started um, this uh, collecting uh, face uh, image data and hand image data together with our collaborators from uh, Amway Innovation Center. So we collected a unique data set uh, of uh, faces and uh, hand images, which Amway uh, provided to us. And the first, our one of one of the first steps to the de towards development of this approach was to identify what data sources are the most valuable for uh, for this task. So in imaging, we have uh, different um, measurements which can be done in different light conditions. So there exists a uh, regular light condition and uh, other additional technologies like parallel polarized light and cross polarized light. And while parallel polarized light helps reveal different uh, skin features related to texture like wrinkles and pores um, or maybe crackles, uh, crackles on the skin, uh, cross polarized are more looking underneath your skin on the different pigment deposits, uh, which of course become more prominent as we age. So in our approach, we wanted to uh, utilize um, both the features uh, which are um, related to texture and which are related to pigmentation. And therefore, we picked up uh, several types of the data to, um, to train our model. So in parallel with the, uh, obtaining facial data, we also uh, 
took into consideration their hand images, uh, which were captured in the same uh, light conditions. So uh, as I mentioned before, it's very important to have a diverse data set and it's, it's important to tap over diverse uh, AI and um, Usually when you have a look at the different uh, aging clocks, one of the major challenges is, is that you have uh, a lot of subjects uh, within their uh, age ranges, uh, like from 30 to 60. And usually what you are lacking is on the tails of the distribution. So you're lacking very young individuals and you are lacking more senior ages. In our case, we were lucky enough because our data set um, included uh, age range from 20 to 19 years old. and it was very important for us that our data set also uh, has all their um, skin tones and uh, measured in eta angles. Uh, we had um, subjects from um, very uh, light uh, skin tones to brown skin tone. And um, our next step was development of a neural network model that takes uh, into account uh, facial images and skin images, and then it predicts um, age uh, independently from facial data and hand data. And the approach that we developed can be used uh, in combination or uh, solely for uh, hand images, depending on what uh, what task we want to solve and what case we want to solve. So we uh, fed uh, the whole um, facial images to the neural network. Um, up, so we uh, one of the major technical challenges was to take high resolution images because usually in um, medical, uh, like in general computer vision, the task is to predict as much as possible from uh, low resolution uh, images. And I think that um, some of you have seen the TV shows where a police is trying to identify car number plates uh, from very low resolution data. But in fact, it's not the case for medical imaging because the goal is the opposite. So you need to extract as much information as possible and as many features as possible from high resolution data. And in fact, you need to develop specific neural network architectures that can work on this um, large, um, large uh, resolution data. And if you think about it, uh, in terms of um, the future of this approach. So once uh, you have developed a model that can work uh, with very big images, in fact, it usually results that this model um, works for, uh, so its performance is quite bad. So it, it, it basically takes a lot of time for a neural network to process this kind of image. And um, if we set up on a goal to potentially develop a solution for which can be utilized in data life, uh, of course, you want to have something which is fast performing and potentially something that you could, would love to implement on a device or web browser. And it's also important to build uh, artificial intelligence algorithms, which can be by design further implemented into the real life system. So the beauty of our approach is that we managed to develop a solution which is uh, which has very, very um, significant uh, performance and it's in potentially it can be uh, put on to mobile devices or web browsers. And um, once you have developed the predictor of age, um, we then set up on a goal to identify the potential biomarkers uh, from the Im uh, imaging biomarkers. So for, for that goal, we built uh, machine learning interpreters that analyzed what uh, parts of our face and hands were important for the prediction of our age. And we believe that these uh, zones are the candidates for uh, biomarker development. And uh, these are exactly the zones that we should focus more in our further research. So once we uh, talking about some of the results of our uh, research, so we basically uh, showed that uh, the correlation between uh, real age and predicted age from the hand image data has much better correlation. You can see it on the slide. And as Christian Riedel mentioned in the previous lecture, um, so chronological age might not be that important for uh, longevity research but as biological age. At the same time, uh, the ability to very accurately identify chronological age is one of the first steps towards uh, development of biomarkers and the ability to correlate this chronological age with other methods and the development of biological age, which can be analyzed from images. And um, the idea of, uh, so our belief uh, why hand age is 
so we'll calculate this with chronological ages in fact that uh, our hands um, are not as much treated with cosmetics and therefore they provide a good alternative for tracking the real uh, condition of our body compared to face images and uh, also the correlation between the left and right hand uh, was very good uh, which shows that and it basically shows that the method is credible and can be utilized as the accurate predictor of uh, chronological age. So um, secondly, I would love to talk on the uh, biomarker development itself. So we used uh, the um, Im image uh, and machine learning biomarker interpreter to identify the zones that contributed positively and negatively to the age prediction. So we um, build consensus maps for from all um, the images in our data set. And in fact, we identify that areas around eye uh, and the face contours are very important for age prediction. At the same time, uh, when it comes to uh, hand images, we saw that um, it, it was more important how the pigmentation is uh, distributed on a hand uh, to predict uh, the age. So um, the, uh, the next steps that we believe uh, are very important is the ability to track um, age not only from lab controlled images but from images taken with devices and um, we're planning to use technology called the main adaptation to be able to predict age uh, from skin, uh, from hand pictures obtained with mobile phone, and we believe uh, it is um, a very potentially beneficial approach uh, towards development of biomarkers that can be utilized in every household by just using a mobile phone. Um, I would love to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer the questions you might have. Thank you very much, Anastasia. Really great talk. We have a number of questions from uh, the Slack channel. Uh, the first one is from Kirill Miakin. Do you think that the hand data can also be subject to variation depending on occupation? For example, hand roughness in construction versus office workers, does, does that have the potential to skew results? Um, yes, yeah, so this is a great question. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, the, um, the, the lifestyle and your work is obviously your style will affect the way uh, your hands look like and therefore they will affect the age prediction. But at the same time, uh, your lifestyle and, for example, um, adverse environmental condition like pollution or maybe lack of sleep, uh, at the same time, it will affect your other biological data. And it is important to take it into account and make an adjustment. Uh, but uh, for, in general, we believe that um, still some biomarkers will be robust, uh, and we, if we exclude their hyperpigmentation or wrinkles, uh, there is still a lot in the skin that can help predict uh, biological age accurately. Uh, in a related question from Walter Crompton, we have, why not use a patch of skin that is not weathered, such as the underside of the thigh? Um, this is also a great question, and uh, actually we didn't use uh, inner part of the thigh yet, but we have experience working with um, uh, the part of your forearm right here, uh, which is not exposed to sun, and in fact you can achieve great results uh, when using this data. But there is a trick that while uh, this data is very sensitive, it's, uh, it has quite limited potential towards using it without any special devices, because if you think about how you would capture it with mobile phone, there will be a lot of challenges and different lighting conditions opposed to them just making picture of your hands. So this is why we, in this particular study, we focused on hands as it's just very simple to collect this data. Okay, I think we will uh, stop here. Um, thank you very much, Anastasia. Fantastic talk, really exciting technology, and hope to see you next year in person uh, in New York City. Absolutely. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.